So, LSU Odyssey dot com. We, we we posted a we posted a live spaces uh, experiment last night, and it was um, it was a success. I felt like it was a great time. I felt like everybody who came in had a good time, and and people were laughing their heads off and. People were having a good time in there, and it was great to, to hear everybody's voices, some I've never heard before, Fax Kellerman. Uh, fa- I don't know if you guys know him, but add Fax Kellerman. He's pretty damn popular on, on Twitter and social media, though, but add Fax Kellerman on Twitter. This this guy is one of the funniest dudes you'll ever hear. Mr. Purple and Gold as well. Add him as well. These two are coming in there hot and heavy, just hilarious from the beginning. Very glad to get those guys in there. A.D. Perkins, my man, you also got to add. I mean, it, you should already be following A. Perkins 2113. If you're not, do it the hell now. This, this, this guy is a sports encyclopedia, especially when it involves LSU or Louisiana sports. Adrian is an absolute beast when it comes to sports knowledge. Uh, I think he could probably just about kick anybody's ass. It's very rare when I stump him with something. Very rare. But we got everybody in there, and maybe not everybody, but there was quite a quite a bit of people in there, and it was great to great to hear from a lot of you. And we're going to be continuing to do that a lot. Well, I'm going to try and. And do as many uh, platforms as possible. Just because, why the hell not? It, it was it was very interesting and intriguing. It felt kind of like an out of body experience, letting your words and your thoughts drip out of your mouth and into the ether, and immediately everyone's brains can react from across the wires. It's it's very bizarre and trippy and. I mean, we should be used to this already. That's basically how every app works. You know, Zoom, all of that, etc., YouTube. But for some weird reason, the spaces thing was kind of trippy to me. But the reason I want to do this video is talk about something we talked about in the vi- in the, in the space or spaces, whatever it is, in the space uh, <laughs> yesterday. Mason Smith, one of LSU's top recruiters. Leaving the staff. This this happened very quickly, almost out of nowhere. Took a lot of staffers by surprise. Took a lot of analysts by surprise. Took a lot of you know scouts, people in the media. Uh, it took us by surprise. Um, we heard some type of rumbling right after that press conference, and it's very interesting that you don't hear, you know. Brian Kelly say, J.R. Belt, we, we want to congratulate and thank J.R. Belton, Will Redmond, and Mason Smith for keeping the 2022 class together. He just says, we want to thank Will Redmond and J.R. Belton. No mention of Mason Smith. I don't think Brian Kelly would have just, you know, dissed him like that. I think Mason was already out the door. And, but it's very interesting. Go 24-7. We're late to this, as Adrian Perkins pointed out. Um, I believe he's a Go 24-7 subscriber. They posted their updates of the full roster list, and Mason Smith is on there. Or sorry, not roster, full staff list, and Mason Smith is on there. So, even they... Did not know, you know, Shea Dixon, who's as connected as they come to LSU. Um, even this took him by surprise. So what that means is this developed very quickly and almost in a personal way between two people, maybe. And then, you know, we're going to go in a different direction, whatever conversation was had, and then Mason goes, and he is no longer with LSU. I feel like this is a really... God, this damn huge, loud truck. Just go with your stupid truck. Just get past us. Come on, we're trying to record something, you jerk. Gosh. Trying to drive his truck? Ugh. 
Stupid trucks. Oh. Just, oh, it's so loud. Annoying. Drowns out any thought, doesn't it? These trucks. Living in the city sucks sometimes. As, as I was saying, losing Mason Smith could be a pretty big deal, though. Okay, we, we've ignored, you know, Corey Raymond. He's been gone. He's, he's recruiting against us at, at Florida. Probably many LSU fans' worst nightmare. Okay? And yet LSU fans seem to be, you know, we're okay with that. We're going to roll with that. We're going to roll with Kerry Cooks and, and Robert Steeples, and we'll be good, right? It just seems like LSU fans were kind of defiant in being, you know, sobbing about the loss of Corey Raymond and crying about Kevin Falk leaving and this guy leaving and and this old staffer, Greg McMahon, and this guy, you know, Mickey Joseph, the list goes on and on. We've survived all of those losses, supposedly, right? Maybe even upgraded some of those losses. But I'm sorry. Mason Smith is not a loss we could have afforded. I'm going to tell you here right now, Mason Smith going to Ole Miss, Mason Smith going to Mississippi, back to Mississippi State, Mason Smith going anywhere within the SEC or within the top echelon of the Power Five greatly hurts LSU on the recruiting trail. Okay, this is a young man who not only knows how to recruit Louisiana, He's an LSU graduate who knows where talent is hidden in every cupboard, every nook and cranny, every football field, every practice field, every bleacher in the state. He's got him covered. Every seven-on-seven -seven competition, he's there. He's got them all covered. He knows everybody. Losing... Mason Smith is a big deal. Mason Smith was at times the only person keeping LSU in the recruiting race for a variety of top targets. Aaron Anderson was just barely holding on because of his relationship with Coach O and Mason. Tackett Curtis's recruitment was kept alive by Mason Smith almost single-handedly. And that was all throughout the, the Orgeron year that he had with, with Orgeron last year. Mason Smith basically, I wouldn't say was the, the, the main person to get us Quincy Wiggins. But he's one of them. Mason Smith has an established relationship with so many of these top recruits. His knowledge of the area... The, how hard and relentless he works. He wants to be a top coach. I think he's going to be one someday. And I think it's it's you know not out of the realm of possibility that that Mason Smith returns to LSU. You know someday in the future. But with what just happened, I don't know if it will be during the Brian Kelly era. Although you know. Brian Kelly has let some guys go and then brought them right back. Mike Denbrock is a perfect, perfect uh, example of what I'm trying to say. Guys he's circled back around to. You know, stuff went down between him and Denbrock, and they were able to figure it out and fix it. That's pretty rare in the coaching world. And if Brian Kelly can, can operate like that, things can be fixed. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. But, you know, people like Billy Embody, very, you know, very confused by this. There's a lot of people who are very, very just confounded by what, what, what just happened and why it happened. And I want to say this. A lot of this has to do with their faith in Jordan Arsement taking over that role. But there's also a component to this that we're just not privy to. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna make kind of an educated guess here. I've heard a few things, some things that can't be repeated, a few things that I don't want to repeat because I don't. I kind of wonder. I have uh, you know, could it be some just one person's opinion? You know that type of thing. Trying to verify sources, but from what I'm gathering. There's a personal aspect to this. Maybe Kelly didn't like Mason's approach or something, and he was like, we can't have, the, have this type of approach. I, I'm not sure, because frankly, I don't understand how anything could be wrong with Mason Smith. Uh, wonderful character, great young man. I mean, this is a very young coach who, who does it the right way. And... You wanted to see him climb the ladder and grow within the program and rise. And I hope he can have the chance to still come back to his alma mater and do that. I hope it's during the Brian Kelly era. I hope he can come back <laughs> as soon as possible. But right now, I'm just not sure if that relationship has reached an impasse or not. Um, you know, like... <laughs> What we're hearing is that he's going to be headed to an SEC rival pretty soon here. And, you know, I was talking to somebody about this. I'm pretty damn sure it's going to be Kiffin's Ole Miss. I think Austin Thomas is going to head there. And I think he's going to take Mason Smith, his buddy, with him. I think... I think this is connected. I think those are two really strong friends, really good guys. And it sucks that both Austin and Mason are both leaving LSU. It really it really sucks and hurts that these two guys were very valued, very loved by the fan base, by people within the program, especially on the roster, are being let go. Um it's it's not good to see because I really feel like okay LSU we've, we've had such a big transition here losing this person losing this guy losing this player losing this coach okay now we're getting everybody back we're getting all, everything settled and then we keep we keep losing a coach here and a, and a person there and a, like we got to we got to stop that I know we have a big staff we've got a a lot, a lot of people on this staff, but right now it's how we could have even con come to the conclusion that losing Mason Smith was a good idea or had to happen is insane to me. But um, we'll we'll be investigating on this situation further, and we're gonna try and figure out what happened here because. It seems like there's a personal element here, and I, I hope I'm wrong in that assumption, but I can only operate on where I'm, the directions I'm being led in, and, and what I'm seeing in the big picture from taking stock of everything I hear. And not just taking stock of what one person is saying, but taking stock of what multiple, multiple people are saying, and I, it's just... LSU have to keep the band together, okay? We can't be losing any more people. You know, Cortez Hankton being uh, interviewed by the Rams and stuff like that. Like, I get that he had to take the interview. I understand that. But it's just like, gosh, LSU can't be losing any anybody else. But I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. LSU are going to lose at least five six, maybe even seven players between now and May 1st. That's just what's going to happen with the transfer deadline. And, you know, maybe one or two of these guys will be big hits. But we'll keep it posted. Things are still kind of uncertain, even though things are far more settled still a lot to figure out with LSU and still a lot of work to be done in preparation for the 2022 season.